الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear brothers and my dear sisters welcome back to Real Talks now for those brothers and sisters who are joining us today and you've never watched this show let me just introduce a bit about the show this is a show which is for the non-practicing brothers and sisters it's a show where you know we keep it short 12 minutes and we just discuss current topics relating to you lot um, and yeah we just go in there's a whole playlist where you can go inshallah after this video and watch the other videos that we've made on this show and yeah i'm gonna go straight into today's topic today's topic is to do with you know when people swear by other than allah that's Some, got, got to set the timer first oh he, he ain't even set 12 minutes timer. from now go so, go go bang all right cool so you know when people they swear by other than allah yeah what i mean by this someone says oh, i swear down Mum's life. I swear by my mum's life. Oh, I swear. Like swear my nan's grave. Like, and they just <laughs> swearing all day. They taking oaths in other word, mm. by other than Allah, bro. Mm. Is this something in our religion which is allowed? Is this something that's you know allowed, or is this something that's proper peak? Like, At what's this, the situation okay, so regarding this? You have to understand something, right? The Prophet Ali Salatu Salam. Some told us that anyone who anyone who, who 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 swears by other than Allah, uh, for example, you swear by your mum, your mum's life. You say I swear down, whatever down is. Yeah. Uh, if if you take such an oath, what you're really doing is that you're taking an you're, you're taking a qasim, you're taking an oath, you're taking a pledge. Uh, sorry, you're swearing by other than Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and this is a uh, disbelief. It's kufr. Subhanallah. It's shirk billahi azza wa jal. The reason for that is because you guys have to understand that ibadah worship is only for Allah. Taking an oath is an act of worship. The same way you doing sajda, me bowing down, placing my head on the ground like when I do when I pray my namaz or when I pray my salah, when I pray my five daily prayers, I put my head down. That's only for Allah. The same way that's only for Allah, me taking an oath is only for Allah. Allah. I am not allowed to do it for anyone other than Allah. And if I do fall into that, I fall into a type of shirk. Now what is shirk? Shirk is the greatest sin. It's the one sin that Allah said, Allah will not forgive this sin. In Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika li man yasha. Allah says shirk is something that Allah does not forgive. Mm. If you die and you die and you done shirk bro and you don't make repentance and come back to, to la ilaha illallah, Allah is not going to forgive that. But Allah says anything less than shirk, he, if he wants to, he'll forgive. Mm. You see know what I'm saying? So uh, people out there saying mom's life, now they say mom's. They don't even say mom's, they say mom's. Abbreviated. But, but they yeah, mean my mom's it. life. Okay, cool. I swear my mom's life. Uh, that is shirk. That's the greatest sin. That is shirk is any act that is worship. You make it for other than Allah. Remember, worship could be something that's on your tongue, tongue, which is what you're doing now. Yeah, a statement on your tongue that was only for Allah, but you've made it for other than Allah now. You made it for your mom, your nan's mm. grave, or your dad's grave, or or the ground that you swear by when you say swear down. Number one. Number two, you also can do worship for your limbs. For example, when I physically take my head, my body, and I bow down. That's only for Allah. I know like some people they go karate and uh, they go martial arts. I remember I used to go karate back in the day. Don't get twisted. I would drop kick a brother, you know. I would drop kick a brother. I went to some tournaments. It's a sweet man. Put him on the ground. Give him one, two licks to the stomach, you know. But man didn't bow down to no one. I remember, I, and then after I started some other martial art, right? I started some, it was uh, some Korean martial art where they combined between Aikido, Jiu Jitsu, some Japanese martial arts, some Muay Thai, they had a mixture of, of martial arts, huh? I remember the first time I went there, the teacher wanted me to bow down. I said, brother, I don't, I don't bow down, brother, to anyone but Allah. And he got a bit upset with me, innit? I was like, brother, you, you man, ain't bowing down to you, brother, you know what I'm saying? And you can't do that. Some people do things like that, it's shirk. Mm. It's, it's an act of shirk, you see what I'm saying? You can't do it. A person can actually leave Islam the moment he bows down on the floor and puts his head on the ground to anyone other than Allah. And then there's obviously actions of the heart. Mm. Actions of the heart Where You know You're doing an act of worship For example You're bowing down And that's for Allah right But it's, you, it's say you're praying And someone walks in the room You want to show off now And you make your sajda You make your bowing down Even longer Or you're reading Quran And you read it even more beautifully now Because someone just walked in the room So now you're, you're On your tongue You're doing it for Allah Your body when you're bowing down Is doing it for Allah But your heart Is doing it for the person So now your heart did shirk So you got to be careful man yeah. Like from many different angles People are falling into shirk I, But let, the one that Obviously yeah. This swearing by Allah Is dangerous I I hear what you're saying But the thing is 
a lot of people they're gonna be asking a couple questions the first one a lot of people are gonna be thinking wait it's not that deep i don't mean it like that like what do you mean like it's just it's just part of my lingo it's just something you know that we just say it's part of the language the dialect that we use it's not that i'm trying to take an oath by you know other than allah so what about if i'm doing it now but I, my intention isn't that i'm doing it for you know for what you just mentioned it for taking an oath by that's, other that's than what I'm allah saying, that's what I'm saying. it doesn't it doesn't matter We've got things in our religion that are actions of the heart, actions of the limbs, i.e. the body and actions of the tongue. Mm. We've got sins of the body, sins of the heart and sins of the tongue. Tongue, okay, good. There are some acts of worship that you do on your tongue, but we're not even going to look at your heart. For example, I'll give you an example. Another type of kufr is I put the Quran in front of you and you stand on the Quran. You step on it. Mm. Like you're a kafir now. Mm. You left Islam. But you can't tell me, oh no, but I was just, you know, joking around. But we don't care if you're joking. Mm. So you're telling me in your heart you still believe that the Quran is the book of Allah. So you're in your heart you respect it, but your body just mocked the Quran by stepping on it. Mm. So that act of worship, we will, we will ignore your heart for a second. We will ignore your, your tongue for a second. Even though it's a bit more complicated than that because yeah. the heart is attached to the action of the... But I don't want to go too deep. The point is we'll ignore all that. We'll ignore your excuse about your heart and your tongue. We're going to look at what did your body do? Your body did kufr now. So same way when you say an action on your tongue, you say, I, I swear by other than Allah. You know, I swear on my mom's life. We're going to put your heart to the side. We're going to put your body to the side. We're going to say, what did your tongue say? Your tongue said an action, a statement of kufr. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you become a kafir. Mm. I don't want to go too complicated too for complicated, our brothers and sisters yeah, because yeah. you can. By saying it, your shirk can reach a level where it becomes major shirk. But that's where you, you say it and you actually now believe Mm, that you mm. can take an oath by your mum and you know your mum is like a god then it goes one step but the, the point is anything whether it's major shit major shit minor shit major kufr minor kufr major disbelief minor disbelief it's disbelief bro yeah. don't go near it yeah, exactly. it's a thing yeah. that leads to major mm, mm. you see what i'm saying yeah, most so things. yeah man like I can, even little things like for example there was this hadith narrated hadith is narrated i think imam abu nu'aym in his hilya to awliya he narrated this hadith where there was a, 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 a sahabi who said to the Prophet, a companion of the Prophet, peace be upon him, who said to him, whatever you will and what Allah wills will happen. Uh. Pay attention. He said, whatever you will, whatever Allah wills will happen. So he included the message. Now pay attention. The Arabic word, the Arabic word for and is the wow. The no. letter wow. We say mm. what? Right? The Prophet rejected this. Told him, you can't say that. That's a statement of kufr. Because through that and, that word and, you just made Allah and the Prophet the same. Same. Now, anyone who knows Arabic knows Alif, Ba, Ta, Ta, you know, wow is just one letter of the Arabic language. It's like me saying W. Mm. It's one letter. That one letter actually means and. So the Prophet ﷺ spoke out against his companion for saying a letter of kufr. A letter which would make Allah and his messenger the same. A letter that could lead to shirk. Let alone a whole word. Let alone a whole sentence, which is, I a swear by statement. my mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you see? So by you saying Allah and his messenger, whatever they will, that letter and in the Arabic, which is a wow, can lead you to kufr. Mm. What about for you to say a whole statement, I swear by my mom's life? SubhanAllah. You see? Yeah, no, it's true, man. You know, like, a lot of the times when we was in Jahiliya, we used to hear people saying these terms and it would be something that would just slip off the tongue. And that's why a lot of people have to be very cautious of, you know, when they speak, what they're actually saying. Because, you know, a Muslim is very cautious in every single thing that they do. You know, that taqwa that, <coughs> you know, we're aiming towards. Taqwa is having that consciousness in every single action that you do, whether it be an action of your limbs, no doubt. whether it be an action of your tongue, no or doubt. whether it be an action that is within your heart. Because we as Muslims, you know, we believe our faith is connected to you, no through doubt. the heart, the tongue and the limbs. No doubt. Okay. So, brothers and sisters, please be very careful when it goes, you know, when, when you're going out there and doing actions, you know, that may lead you into trouble so be very cautious of what you say what how you do things like uh, you know on your limbs and what you believe in your heart some obviously. of the scholars used to say before i say a statement from my mouth i would ask myself 150 times if i should say this subhanallah 
And you know the hadith that you mentioned in the child Mabai the other day? Yeah. It was the Prophet ﷺ said a person might say a statement that seems so small to this person. That seems so small to this person. But then it will be so big to Allah, the statement that you just said, that a person will fall so deep into the hellfire. Yeah. The Prophet ﷺ said if you guarantee me that you will protect what is between your lips, i.e. your tongue, and what's between your two thighs, i.e. your private parts, then I guarantee you Jannah. Jannah. Going one of the one, the two main reasons why people make it to hell is what their private parts and their tongues. Tongues. Sometimes your tongue is gonna say kufr, which means you might not even ever come out of the hellfire. Subhanallah. Sometimes it's just gonna say sins, which means you go and you'll be dipped in there for a period of time and you come out. So you gotta be careful. And you know another thing, actually, just while we're on the topic that, that is on this topic of you know little statements that could be kufr that we that we say. There's a hadith al Bukhari and Muslim in which the Prophet Ali said that Allah had just had informed him. That a group of the, the people there had believed in Allah And a group of people who were there had disbelieved in Allah mm. And the Prophet said that the one who believed in Allah Were the ones who when the rain came down They said Allah sent the rain And the ones who disbelieved were the ones that said When the rain comes down The star sent down the rain So mm. the point is that Even the rain comes down from Allah You know what I'm saying So Imam Ibn Taymiyyah said something deep here They said the people are being told The rain Allah made it come down don't say, oh, the cloud brought down the rain mm. Or the star brought the rain Or, you know, the, the planets were aligned and the rain came down You know, some people have weird like, beliefs yeah, in yeah, astronomy beliefs like that, and whatnot yeah, yeah. So the Prophet ﷺ is trying to say, Allah brought down the rain So Imam Ibn Taymiyyah says something deep He said the same as, like, you know, when you're on a ship And the ship, it sails based on the wind So he says, sometimes the wind is proper nice So the ship will roll smooth So the people will say, oh, that wind was banging yeah, The wind got us there wind today got us there, yeah. He's saying that is a statement that could fall under Kufa Because the wind didn't do nothing. Yeah. It was Allah. Allah, Allah sent the wind. Allah, yeah. You see? So now also the same is where if you're driving. Mm. And you know some of us, we say, oh yeah, bruv, you got us there nice and safe. Yeah. No, you didn't get me there time and safe. Allah got me there on time and Allah, safe. Because yeah. Allah could have made an accident happen on the road. Mm -hmm. Allah got me there on time and safe. And when you say Allah, what you can say is Allah made you a means yeah. to get me on time and safe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used you to make me get there on time and safe. We have to be very careful. When yeah. Everything. This is, this is what la ilaha illallah is, brothers and sisters. La ilaha illallah means that there is no one worthy to be worshipped in truth except for Allah. All that is worshipped is for Allah. And this is gratitude. Yeah. You, you're supposed to be grateful to Allah for getting you there on time and safe. But now you're giving that which is for Allah, the gratitude to a human being, to the driver. SubhanAllah. You see it. Yeah, it's dangerous, man. So brothers and sisters, you know, hopefully you took benefit out of that. Um, inshallah, you know, spread this around to, you know, your friends, people who you think will benefit, people who you've heard say such statements, you know. Um, I just mean, you know, you know how common it is? Like, there's a brother I know, he says it all the time. Every time I just tell him, act, don't say swear now. Yeah. Don't swear now. And you know, that's that way, you know that, right? And yeah. that's that way to Tawheed. Exactly. That's, 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 that's a reminder. So I'm saying... You know, like some of you might be thinking you're sinners, you're this, that, you know, we, you know, we all sin, we, we all make all mistakes. Sin, exactly. But then, you know, this is, imagine, anytime you hear someone say this, you might be doing sins. May Allah forgive you and allow you to stop that. Mm. I mean, but at the same time, look at this amazing act of worship that you're doing. But you're telling people don't do this, this, this shit. So always remind each other, you know what I'm saying? Because it's a, it's a bad habit that we've got to get out of. And you know, just a, on the last point, it's such... Uh, you know A rewardable act Understand The prophets And the messengers That came What was their message What was their call Their call was To worship Allah alone And stay away from Associating partners With Allah Stay away from shirk Stay away from kufr And now Subhanallah Inshallah You've learnt something And you can also tell people To stay away from Such, such stuff So Yeah brothers and sisters We're going to leave it there Inshallah um, And yeah Until the next time Assalamu alaikum Assalamu alaikum people